Hey guys, welcome back to JW Deep Sky. That was the Antares rocket taken off from Wallops Island, Virginia. Uh, me and my family went down to Chincoteague Island in Virginia, right across the bay from the launch. Uh, and I recorded that with my Rokinon 135mm lens, which is also a great astrophotography lens. I recommend picking one up. They're fairly affordable used, probably around $200. So, on to the topic at hand. The ASI 533MC Pro is a one-shot color cooled camera. One of the things I love about it most is that it has a square sensor. I don't know if you can see that too well. So it has a square sensor. Not everybody loves the square sensor as much as I do. It just makes framing up targets super easy, especially when paired with the ASI Air, which if you have a go-to mount, you can have the ASI Air just point and shoot to any place in the sky and then it will plate solve and make any corrections necessary to get you exactly pointed to where you want to go. The reason the square sensor makes framing up your targets so easy is because once your plate solved to the point in the sky you want to be, you should have the object in the center of the frame. And you don't have to turn the camera in any way because it's just a square, unless, you know, there might be some targets where you want to angle it a certain way. But in general, whatever is in the middle of this frame is, is going to be good enough for framing up your target. So now some technical details. Uh, it's a one-shot color camera. They do actually make a monochrome version of this, and it's $200 more, so $1,000 versus $800. And it uses Sony's latest IMX533 sensor, so one of the reasons I picked it up was because, you know, it was using newer sensors than some of the other one-shot color cameras from this brand, so just new technology. Buzzwords appealed to me, I had to get it. But it really does take amazing pictures, as you'll see in the first light picture. And I was using this in combination with this filter. This is the SV Boney UHC filter. And that filter like just demolished my expectations. A lot of people I read online were saying that, you know, to get really great results, if, if you have a lot of light pollution in your yard, you need like an Optolong L Extreme or an Optolong L Ultimate or, you know, one of the better dual band filters to get like really good results with um, deep sky like nebula objects. But <clears throat> the, S the SV Boney UHC really just blew me away. Uh, you'll see for yourself in the first light pictures. It was only like $40 on Amazon on Prime Day and it may possibly be like the single best price performance item I've purchased so far. That said, I also purchased the ZWO Duo Band filter and this is a 1.25 inch filter. The SV Boney filter was a 2 inch filter and if you have the uh, Skywatcher Evolux 62 ED and the field flattener reducer for that scope. The two inch filters can screw right onto the front uh, of that setup. But here's how you attach 1.25 inch filters with this camera. The camera comes out of the box with this little adapter that you just screw right in here. But I like to put the filter in here first. That way it's just easier to spin. So here you go. Filters on there. Now I can put it into the camera. And there you have it. The filter is in place. Um, I've heard that you don't have to worry about any vignetting or anything like that with 1.25 inch filters with this, with this camera because of the small square sensor. And in addition to the duo band filter, I also picked up a ZWO UVIR cut filter. Um, I don't know much about this filter uh, other than it's, it's good for broadband images. So I'm going to use this filter for broadband images and the ZWO duo band for nebula photos from now on. And if I'm not satisfied with the ZWO Duo Band, then I'll maybe upgrade to like a, an Optolong L Ultimate or something like that. But for as, as cheap and affordable as the SV Boney UHC filter was, and how bad my light pollution is, I have very bad light pollution. I mean, I'm, I'm in technically a Bortle 5 area, but I have like really bright street lights everywhere, and I have cars driving by with their high beams like constantly. So, I mean, you would think that it would be very hard to get any type of good result whatsoever, especially with such a cheap filter. But looking back on the results, I I almost don't need to upgrade from the SV Boney UHC filter. That's how that's how good the results were. But that said, with a better filter, I'm excited to see how good the results can be. And for comparison, here's the wavelength charts uh, for both filters. So this is the SV Boney UHC filter. It's pretty broad. It does block out a lot of light pollution, but it also does a great job of isolating the nebula details. And this is the ZWO Duo Band filter. As you can see, it's much more narrow and it really focuses much better on nebula wavelengths. So it took me a bit 
to get a good picture with this, but it was only because of the other parts of my rig that I wasn't fully comfortable with, I didn't fully understand. Um, so here's my rig. So with this camera, I'm using the Skywatcher Evolux 62ED with the 0.9 times field flattener reducer. I've got the SV Boney mini guide scope and the ZWO ASI 120mm mini guide camera. And that guide scope is just fine. I haven't had any issues with it. So, you know, it's a cheaper guide scope. It's about $50. And I don't see any reason to get anything more expensive than that because I've been getting great results with it. And everything is sitting atop the Skywatcher EQM35 Pro. And with that mount, I'm able to get around an arc second on average uh, RMS for guiding, which allows me to take five minute exposures with uh, pretty much no issues with my stars as far as star trailing or anything like that goes. So I was originally stacking in Deep Sky Stacker and then processing in Photoshop, um, but then eventually I moved on to Cyril, which is a free program. It's a pretty amazing program for being free. I also found these great tutorials by this YouTuber Deep Space Astro. Highly recommend if you're trying to just do everything with a free software. You can get pretty far with it. Uh, it's great. It's quick for stacking. Uh, you can get pretty good results, you know, post-processing. <clears throat> but I think the real magic wand in this hobby is picks in sight. And there's this great YouTuber, uh, Peter Zelinka, that makes it really easy to learn the very basics of picks in sight. And um, I was able to get amazing results uh, after just a few quick tutorials. Now I have my post-processing down to like maybe 10 minutes using picks in sight. Uh, a couple of one-click tools on there make it way better than any of the other images I've processed up to this point. And I've also heard that it takes a really long time to stack in PixInsight, so I haven't even tried stacking in PixInsight. So I've just been stacking in Serial and then post-processing in PixInsight. And that's worked for me. So that said, here's the first and second light pictures of the Cygnus wall and the Veil Nebula. Um, using the SV Boney UHC filter with the ASI 533MC Pro and processed in PixInsight. And by the way, if you want to see the full resolution images at any time, you can go to my website, jwdeepsky.com. And it's really cool to click on them and zoom in. You can really see like the vastness of the nebula and it looks really great on there. So, And if you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, enjoy the pictures and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.